Hello world, this is the third hardware prototype of Zill 8-bit computer. Let's see in this video how it differs from the previous version and let's run CPM on it. In my previous video, I presented the first and second prototype of Zill 8-bit computer. Check these videos if you haven't yet. As you can see, the third prototype is much more compact and convenient. I used to use an FPGA development board. Now I have made my own, which outputs the VGA signal. On the right, you can see that board. On the left, we have the motherboard. The main difference with the previous prototypes is the size, as I replaced the unused FRAM spot by a smaller i 2 CE PROM, and all the logic chips were replaced by two PLDs. Still, there are some small hardware bugs, but I am able to run CPM by fixing them thanks to the wires you can see on the breadboard. And here it is, CPM on Zill 8-bit computer. This is a partial implementation. The keyboard is supported, the video text mode works properly, including vertical scrolling, RAM disk support, and CPM can be loaded without any other external computer. The way CPM is loaded is pretty simple. When the board starts, the code from ROM is executed. Its only purpose is to store CPM into the RAM. Then jump to CPM cold boot routine where initialization begins. Even though our RAM is 512 kilobytes, CPM will only be aware of the lower 64K. The rest will be used as a virtual disk. And as you may have guessed, that virtual disk is empty on boot. This is why I also included a small basic interpreter called Tiny Basic directly inside the ROM. In CPM cold boot routine, we will copy Tiny Basic from the ROM into the RAM at virtual memory address 100 in hex. Why 100 in hex? Because CPM has a very convenient command named save, which saves the programs at that address into the disk, RAM disk in our case. And this is how we end up with the file inside our virtual disk after booting. Let's have a try. Save 10 pages, each page is 256 bytes. Let's name the file tinypass.com. Check the files, the file is here. We can execute it. Let's write a small program for i equals 0 to 5, print, hello, seal, next i, and run. Oh, something's wrong. For i equals 0 to 5. Yeah, okay, it works now. What hardware modifications were required on the board for running CPM? Well, the main issue was the memory mapping. As I showed in the previous video, my memory mapping was fixed. First half was for ROM, second half was for RAM. This was easy to implement in hardware and also simple to use. CPM, however, requires the whole 64K of memory to be able to be mapped as RAM, even the first bytes of memory. And this is why I modified the memory mapping to have this, 4 pages of 16 kilobytes. Each page can be mapped to ROM, RAM, VDRAM, or any extension card. In short, we have 64K of virtual memory, which can be mapped to any part of our 4 megabytes of physical memory, as now we have 22 bits of address. This also means that these bits can be accessed directly from the extension port, so external devices can be mapped on that physical address space. Why CPM? I've been receiving some comments from you to run CPM on the board. And as I was considering modifying the memory mapping already to what I just described, this confirmed me in implementing it, and it even motivated me to port CPM on the late bit computer. Will it be my main focus now? Uh, not really. This was more like a proof of concept again. This is not my main focus. This was more a fun challenge to me that let me test my new memory mapping. One of my main goals is to continue developing ZillOS. However, it was interesting to see that CPM has a very good software library. CPM itself is a bit limited though. It does not support banking, at least in the 2.2 version, and is text-based only. But there are some very interesting concepts in CPM that inspire me for developing ZillOS. Well, that was a quick video to show you what I've done over the past weeks. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, just leave a comment below and I will do my best to reply to you. See you next time.